Now, one of the things that makes motion so special is this concept of what are called behaviors. Uh, motion is essentially an animation program. You create objects and you animate the parameters. You can make things move around. You can make you can make them change color. You can make them do all sorts of different things. Any parameter associated with an object you can modify over time. And that's really the heart of what motion is about. But doing that with keyframes, the traditional method, can be pretty tedious because you have to set very specific frames. You have to know exactly on which frame. Like even something as simple as moving this object from here to here would require several steps. You'd have to identify specifically the position and the frame. And you and if you wanted to make changes after you had established it, it would be a, you know another set of steps. But with behaviors, you can do this in a really quick and easy way. Um, it, it, more of the idea of giving it a tendency. Rather than saying with a keyframe where you give something specific instructions, you must be at this position at this time. With the behavior, you say, kind of do this sort of thing, and it'll do it for you. And I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about now. First of all, to apply a behavior, you select an object and go to the little behaviors pop up in the toolbar. And this is a list of all the behaviors available. And as you see, there's quite a lot of them. And they're very powerful and really, really fun to use. Now, I'm going to go into a lot more detail when we get deeper into the training. But for now, I just want to give you a very basic overview just to give you a, a glimpse of the power. So I'm going to start with something really simple like the throw behavior. And the throw behavior basically is the idea of throwing the object. I'm going to take this object and I'm going to throw it. And, and here's the HUD for the throw. And all I'm going to do is just grab the center and drag that out. And I create a little arrow there. If I zoom in, you can see the little arrow more clearly. And I'm just going to play. So now, because I've applied this behavior, I'm getting this animation where the object is going to move from the, that original position in this general direction and at that general speed. If I want to make it go faster, I make my arrow bigger. And now it's going to go faster. If I, you know, even much faster, I can make the arrow go much faster. And now it's going so fast, it's, it's getting off the screen right before it even finishes. So that's probably a little too fast in this case. We'll back that off. And you see, this is where the power of playing while or leaving the video playing while you're making adjustments comes really into play because I can see what I'm doing exactly while it's happening. Now, this is a nice little animation, but let's say we wanted to change the direction. We realize, oh, you know what? I'd rather it move on a horizontal movement. Well, I just move my arrow to horizontal, and now I have a horizontal movement or whatever it is you're looking for. Right now, I have the same idea, but it's now moving horizontally. I can move the object, and it moves the entire path, right? So regardless of what the path is, I can also make adjustments to the object dynamically. And this little effect is happening very simply and easily. And this is so much quicker and easier than using keyframes. Now, I'll do a little demonstration of keyframes in a few minutes just to give you a glimpse of that. But this idea is such a, a radical reinvention of how to do animation. And this works with all sorts of different parameters. As you see in this, in the behaviors pop up, there are specific behaviors for audio, specific things to do with camera and 3D, motion tracking, parameter behaviors. We can take any individual parameter and assign a particular behavior to that. Specific things for uh, speed effects, for doing with particles or replicators and shapes. I mean, it goes on and on. There's really just a huge number of cool and interesting behaviors. I'm going to do one more real simple one, which is the fade in, fade out. And the fade in, fade out creates a new little HUD for me here. And again, let's just play our project here. Let's move that over just a touch there. And now the object fades in at the beginning. And when it gets to the end, it's going to fade out. Actually, what's going to happen in this case is that because you see here's my behavior in the timeline, I've set my in and my out range in the mini timeline to here to here, but my behavior is actually going all the way to the end. So if I want to grab that, I need to shrink that behavior, set that properly, and now the object fades in at the beginning, and it's going to fade out at the end. We can change the speed of the fade in and fade out. If I want that fade out to be slower, I can drag that over like that. So now it's going to fade out a little bit more slowly. Start a little early there. It goes a nice slow fade out at the end and so forth. And the HUD gives you this nice visual representation. You notice that you also, in the Behaviors tab now, you can see, in my inspector, you can see the specific parameters for that setting, for the fade in, fade out, or for the throw. I can adjust the offset, so if I don't necessarily want it to start right away. I can set the start offset a little bit later, and now it's going to stay black until that frame there and fade in. And let's move the end offset as well. It's going to fade out a little early there. 
See that's so you can control that here in the in the inspector. And similarly with the throw, we can adjust the velocity or adjust, you know, what sort of speed effect we want it to be a continuous movement or have it ramp to its final value. So a lot more additional control here in the inspector. And that's generally the way it works. The HUD gives you a subset. It gives you just the important controls. And in these cases, with these behaviors, it gives you a nice visual representation of the effect you're providing. The inspector gives you all the controls, all the parameters available for that particular behavior or whatever it is you're, you're working with. And so that's just a glimpse of some of the power of behaviors.